Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You likely recognize that as the start of a Robert Frost poem. It is also a great lead-in to the first of the 150 Psalms that are found in the Bible. The Book of Psalms, uh, which is this um, collection of prayers and psalms, meditations. The Book of Psalms uh, makes a distinction between the good and the evil, and this is something we see throughout the Bible. Uh, we, see, uh, we see Jesus talking about good trees and bad trees. We see Jesus talking about a, a wide road that, uh, that is well-trafficked and it leads to destruction and a narrow road that is harder to go down, but it has a better outcome. All of these metaphors are, are sort of in play uh, in a variety of places. They imply a choice, and they're very prominently displayed in Psalm 1, which is one of, I think, most people's favorite psalms certainly one of my favorite psalms, uh, and it, it is uh, going to be instruction for how we can live well, how we can be happy uh, when life is going well, which is arguably more difficult than some people expect it to be, but also how to be happy when life is not going well. So over the next few weeks for our morning uh, devotions, uh, we're going to be in the book of Psalms, which is a collection of prayers, again, that are found in the middle of the Bible. The, the book of Psalms uh, is, uh, is one of the wisdom literature books. The Bible divides up into three big categories, the law, the prophets, and wisdom literature. Wisdom literature is made up of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, uh, Song of Solomon, and the book of Job. So um, the book of Psalms, most of them, many of them, written by David, uh, divide up into a number of categories. We have uh, psalms that are psalms of praise, those of thanksgiving, those of lament, imprecatory psalms, messianic psalms, confessional psalms. Uh, most of them are prayers. Some of them are meditations. Uh, they're not words that we say to God, which is what the psalms often are. These, they're prayers. God gives us the words to pray back to him. <laughs> So many of them are words that we're directing at God, but some of the Psalms are meditations. They're words that we direct back on ourselves. So let me read from Psalm chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step of the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction." So this week I want to focus on Psalm 1, and we start uh, today with verse 1, blessed is the one. And this in, in the Hebrew, the grammatical structure, this is like all capitalized with an exclamation point, and it's written in bold. Uh, it, it is, a, oh, how blessed is the one. And, and the word blessed is in plural, implying many blessings, right? So there's a, there's a multiplicity of blessings that comes to the one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. Now, this is classic Hebrew parallelism, which is part of what we see in Hebrew poetry. You just are, you're making a point and then you're repeating that point from slightly different angles. So it's not like you gotta pull this apart and see fine nuance differences, different points being made. This is making a point and it's making it from a variety of different ways. English poetry often rhymes words. Hebrew poetry tends to rhyme ideas. And that's what we see here. So there is this idea that you're blessed if you're doing the right thing and if you're doing the wrong thing, you are heading down the wrong path. Uh, we see a progression of those who walk, stand, and then sit in the company of mockers and bad people who are gonna pull you astray. 
And so there's this idea that sin is progressive and it pulls us down and we need to not go down that path. We need to go down the path uh, of, of following God. So I will end this morning by asking, which path are you on? Are you running down the right path? Have a good day.